When it comes to inputting and outputting information regarding my Arduino projects, then I've always kept it a bit simple. That means push buttons or rotary encoders for the inputs and in the best case an ordinary 16x2 LCD for the outputs. But we live in the year 2018 and nowadays everyone, including myself, expects a colorful and sharp LCD screen for the outputs and a touchscreen for the input. Thankfully though, such LCD screens with touchscreen functionality do also exist for the Arduino with a budget-friendly price point. So in this video, we will learn a bit about the theory of such TFT LCDs and resistive touchscreens and ultimately create an example GUI, aka graphical user interface for an Arduino project. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. Upload your GURPL files to get custom PCBs easily. Their professional PCB production has the most competitive price in the world, so feel free to test out their fast delivery and high quality PCBs today. To offer a bit of variety, I got myself three slightly different 2.4 inch TFT LCDs with a resolution of 240 by 320. So to start off, let's talk very briefly about the theory of such TFT LCDs, also known as liquid crystal displays. As their name suggests, they consist of an array of liquid crystal segments. And since our LCDs have a resolution of 240 by 320, we got a total of 76,800 liquid crystal segments. Now controlling each segment individually would be impossible, due to the big number of them. That is why the segments split up a two-dimensional matrix with 240 rows and 320 columns. This way we can control each one of them individually by multiplexing them. And if you are scratching your head right now asking yourself what is multiplexing, then make sure to watch my video about the subject. Anyway, now we can control all liquid crystal segments, but what are we actually controlling of them? Well, since those segments cannot emit light by themselves, they get backlight and all we can do is control a red, green and blue filter in order to mix the color that we desire. That means since we have to control the RGB values for each row, we do not have 240 of them, but 720 of them instead. To prove that, I set a white image on one of the LCD screens and put it under my microscope, which clearly showcases that each row consists of an R, G and B pixel. So what our microcontroller will later do is going through the segment rows and lines and setting the RGB values for each pixel in order to create the picture that we want to display. Now of course we could dive deeper into the theory with the different timing signals that such an LCD requires. But for now let's keep it simple and let's ask ourselves how the hell can we provide a total of 1040 control lines for the LCD with the Arduino. Well the answer is we can't and we don't have to since such an LCD is always built around an IC. In this case the ILI9341, which is a TFT LCD single chip driver and offers a total of 1278 pins. By the way, the datasheet of this IC consists of 233 pages, so if you are bored one day then this could be an interesting read. But anyway, what is important for us now is the IC's microcontroller unit interface which supports parallel 8, 9, 16 and 18 bit data and a 3 slash 4 serial line interface. And this interface is actually the big difference between my three LCD boards. The first one has a 4 wire serial interface with the serial data pins, serial clock, chip select and the data slash command selection. The second one got an 8 bit parallel interface with LCD D0 to D7 
and the third one got a 16-bit parallel interface with DB0 to DB15. So basically all the three displays can do the same, but they all offer a different frame rate. For example, we need a minimum of 16 bits of data to set the color for one pixel, which means our serial interface requires 16 clock cycles to send over that data, while the 8 bits parallel interface requires 2 clock cycles and the 16 bit parallel interface requires 1 clock cycle. But since we do not care that much about the frame rate when it comes to a graphical user interface, I initially wanted to use the CUL interface as the example display, because it is easy to hook up. Only problem was that no matter how hard I tried talking to this display, it never wanted to work correctly, which was truly frustrating. So as the alternative, I will be using the 8-bit parallel TFT LCD which is also easy to connect due to its shield form, but only leaves the analog pin 5 unused on the Arduino Uno, which is for most projects not really enough. That is why I recommend using an Arduino Mega for bigger projects. But nevertheless, the datasheet once again tells us what lines we have to pull high or low to read and write data, and what sequence of bits we have to send over to control the color of each pixel. But to decrease our workload, I rather utilized the TFT LCD library from Adafruit. After opening up its example sketch, I realized that the wiring mentioned in the sketch is the same as our LCD shields, which was convenient since I only had to click upload and then enjoy the different appearing graphics on the LCD. Now the Adafruit library offers a couple of very handy functions, of which the fill screen, set cursor, set text color, set text size, print line and fill rects are the most important ones for our graphical user interface. I think all of them are pretty self-explanatory, but it is mentionable that the color values need to be 16 bits and the rectangle function has a X and Y start pixel a width and height value, and of course a color value. The 0,0, 0 pixel on the screen is in the top left corner, and then the value increases to 240 in the x direction and 320 in the y direction. And with this knowledge we can already create a black screen filled with two rectangles that state LED on and LED off. All that is left to implement for this graphical user interface is the touchscreen functionality. This LCD shield features a resistive touchscreen with four wires, which are connected to pin A1, A2, D6 and D7. Those pins connect to a top resistive coding and a bottom resistive coding, whose connecting terminals are oriented either in the Y direction or X direction. You can actually measure the resistance for those codings through the pins, and resistance is the keyword here, because by powering, for example, the X pins with 5 volts and ground, we can then touch the display, which connects the top and bottom layer, and thus lets us measure the voltage of this X direction voltage divider through one Y pin that is connected to an analog input. The same strategy can then be applied to determine the Y point, which ultimately gives us the X and Y coordinates of our touch point. And to keep things simple once again, we can utilize the Adafruit touchscreen codes. As an example, we can use the TFT paint sketch, in which we only have to change the pins for our touchscreen and invert the minimum and maximum values for the X direction. And just like that, the TFT paint example works like a charm, but you can always utilize the serial monitor function of the codes in order to fine tune the minimum and maximum values for the touchscreen, in order to get even better results. Now all we have to do to implement the touchscreen functionality in our codes is to check whether the X and Y coordinates lays in the area of our rectangles and then either turn on or off an LED on pin A5. 
And after uploading, you can see that by touching the corresponding rectangle, our LED turns on or off. Of course, you can get more creative when it comes to the design of the graphical user interface and also display sensor values if your project requires it. But for now, you should be familiar with the basics of TFT LCDs and resistive touchscreens and you should be able to utilize them in your own projects. And as a reference, you can also download my example sketches, for which you can find the link in the video description below. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe even learned something new. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.